you very much, Maria. Um, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about our adventure uh, with Apache Hop, an incubating uh, project. So uh, I thought a little bit about uh, talking a little bit about the background would be nice. And not to make it too uh, dry, I'll, I'll jump right into the demo after that. Uh, talk a little bit about the tool sets, the, the user interface. And uh, yeah, how, how did we uh, manage to uh, do in the Apache incubator? How are we using other a couple of other Apache projects? And then a little bit about the path forward. And uh, that should be about 40 minutes. And we'll have five minutes or whatever for a Q and A, I guess. All right. Um, so yeah, it's a it's a recursive acronym in the good tradition of recursive acronym. It's the Hop Orchestration Platform, and uh, we want to orchestrate data, uh, pipelines, and workflows, um, but also metadata. Um, not just the editing, handling. Uh, configuration, uh, the whole thing, right? And then, um, you know, by uh, offering a structured metadata-driven platform, we want to have the ability to provide insights into what was executed, the lineage, the logging, uh, configuration, ecosystem complexity. And then we provide like a platform, a whole uh, GUI, um, for systems, uh, Linux, Windows, uh, OS X, but also in the browser. Uh, commands, server scripts, Docker containers, API documentation, and last but not least, community, right? And uh, so how did Hop came, come about? It was, um, yeah, just like a split off, I guess, from, from uh, the Kettle Code page, Apache, license in itself, uh, becoming a little bit stale, one could argue, um, and the need from the community to, to innovate in that space. And, um, you know, we started uh, by saying, okay, so if we want to make this a new project, let's do it on the Apache umbrella. And let's also uh, refactor and uh, <laughs> renew the software code base, which was, um, yeah, which is over 20 years old now. So we rewrote the user interface, we rewrote the architecture, the metadata backend, the tool set. We kept refactoring until yeah, a month ago or so. <laughs> and uh, so we added also a whole bunch of uh, plugins uh, to the, to the ecosystem uh, for project management, environment lifecycle management, uh, unit testing, the whole of Apache Beam, uh, debugging capabilities, years of work. So we've been at it for, for years now. And uh, so we're part of the incubator program. Uh, so you can find us at hopapache.org, the usual URLs, right? At, uh, we, we build on the Apache Jenkins continuous integration. We downloaded 0 0.99, which uh, happened over a month ago, and we fixed 130 something bucks, 129, I don't know. And now we are voting on 1.00, which is our first stable release. We have a fast growing active community, and uh, we do cool stuff I'll, in the community. I'll talk about that later. Uh, so why Apache Hop? So we, we are living in a quickly diversifying technological data landscape, and it makes it hard to manage uh, complexity, uh, and still drives the need for rapid innovation. And uh, you know, it's it's sometimes hard to support the best development practices uh, like uh, integration testing, unit testing, stuff that I said earlier. Um, and development done independent from a single large, co large corporation. Involvement is welcome, but not uh, driven by. Uh, so driven by and for data orchestration professionals, right? And uh, uh, so we want to make uh, data orchestration better for organizations by making it cheap, so low cost of setup, the creation of solutions, configuration maintenance. Um, 
easy to set up, build, maintain, deploy, fast, you know, the whole list. Uh, so those requirements are sometimes a little bit at odds with what the hardcore developer wants to do. Maybe you want, you want to code uh, cryptical things inside of uh, uh, the Java or Python API, whatever. So we're saying like, yeah, you can do that inside of Hop, but always within the uh, the bounds, the, the framework of uh, all these things that we mentioned earlier uh, in, in terms of best practices, right? So support for version control, testing, CIDC, project lifecycle management, metadata management. Uh, so the key architectural features is that we are Apache licensed, metadata driven, so there's no code generation going on in theory. Um, and uh, we have a modular pluggable architecture, so you can scale it all the way down. Uh, I'll explain a little bit about how easy that can be <laughs> to, to lower than 30 megabytes. Uh, so we have a very fast startup because of that. It's basically the startup time of the JVM and minimal overhead. And we integrated Apache Beam so that we can support running uh, data orchestration work on Spark, Flink, and Dataflow. Um, our uh, documentation, which is always like um, very important for new onboarding people or people that want to search for a specific piece of information is version control. So our documentation is uh, living alongside the code in ASCII docs. And so we want to make uh, Hop very easy to use with transparent naming. And I'll talk a little bit about that. And uh, what we also find very important is that uh, we keep expanding our suite of integration tests. Uh, we found that unit testing is a very poor way of testing the code base. So we started doing integration testing. So every night we have hundreds of pipelines and workflows running. And, um, you know, the results of those things are, are tested um, every day so that we can guarantee backward compatibility and stability across versions uh, without losing any sleep over it. Uh, so we rewrote uh, the old GUI from the old days. So it's all new code, uh, completely pluggable GUI features so we can build rich UIs, uh, which are still lightweight and not hard to code, right? Uh, scalable interface for uh, high DPI displays uh, or, or the visually impaired. If you set a large font on your, disk, on your desktop, you'll see that uh, the Hop GUI scales with that. And uh, so, yeah, four platforms Windows, OS X, Linux, and web, and support for dark mode teams on Linux, OS X, and now also on the, on the web Docker container. Um, and so, all GUI configuration options have command line variants. One of the things that is important is not everybody has the luxury of of working on a GUI all the time. Sometimes we do work through five SSH tunnels. And um, so yeah, we cleaned up a lot of the uh, configuration uh, JSON for easy read readability of, of a lot of the stuff. Uh, uh, so the tool set, let's, uh, let's dive right in. So we have uh, a bunch of scripts. These are shell scripts for um, uh, for Linux OS X, and for Windows we have um, bat files for those that are interested. And so yeah, so the naming is is pretty straightforward. Uh, Hop run allows you to run a pipeline or workflow. The Hop GUI uh, runs the GUI. The Hop import script allows you to import. Uh, uh, projects from the kettle days. Hop search allows you to search inside of uh, projects and, and uh, environments. Hop server start, starts a, a server uh, so that you can do remote execution. Uh, Hop conf, uh, I'm not going to run that one, has hundreds of options to, st uh, to configure all aspects, um, create new projects from the command line. 
especially useful for um, for automatically configuring virtual machines, Docker containers, and stuff like that. And Hop GUI, you just start Hop GUI with, like this. And, um, so that takes usually like a few seconds, depending on the capabilities of your machine. And uh, by default, you'll see a few projects. Uh, you can create others. Uh, the projects, uh, the samples projects that you'll find will have samples of for transforms, uh, you know, for generating sequels, sequences. Uh, there's a whole bunch of, uh, yeah, even Kafka, consumer, producer, merge join, the basics. So, if you, so you can just open these up and see how they look and you can run these. Uh, typically we run these using a local uh, engine. And so uh, Hop has a system of pluggable runtime engines. And so the, so the, the local uh, Hop engine is a very opportunistic uh, single server multi-threaded engine. It shares a lot of commonality with the, the Beam Direct engine and is totally different from the Spark Fling Dataflow engines, which uh, have the capability of scaling out work over multiple servers and are also capable of dealing with failures in the middle of a, of a workload, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, but yeah, so, so run these with a local engine and you can even see output data if you click on the small data grids and see how that merge join uh, behaves typical things, zooming in and out. And um, so here you can see the, the projects. And so what are projects like? They're typically uh, simply a folder with a set of default uh, uh, assumptions, like where's my metadata store? Where are my uh, unit test data sets stored? And so, so this is the data orchestration perspective where you can work on various uh, pipelines and workflows. Pipelines are parallel workloads and they stream data from one transform to another. Uh, so if you know the beam terminology, you know the hop terminology, it's exactly the same. And um, uh, workflows, uh, so they, uh, let's take a workflow they can, uh, they always have a starting point and they execute actions one at a time. And uh, they're useful for, for doing things like, um, you know, verifying a databases are up and running or web services are available, files are there, uh, encryption of decryption, uh, creation, deletion of folders, moving files, uh, doing file transfers, sending an email if something ran correctly or not, um, stuff like that, right? So the, the management around that. You can do uh, pessimistic uh, approaches like fail early and often. I'm gonna ping a server. I'm gonna assume it's not up and running. Uh, so if I, if I can't ping it, then I don't, need to connect to it using a connection, maybe with a timeout and a weird error somewhere, I know that it's not available, right? So you can be the very defensive in your, in your setup this way. And so these, um, uh, these workflows, they can have like a positive or a, uh, let's, uh, let's on a board, right? Or a negative, uh, paths so so you can follow uh, success or failure paths and and so in in that aspect a workflow never fails you know it's just a, a failure is an acceptable outcome it's just up to you to handle the failure in a, in a proper way all right so 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 that's a data orchestration perspective you have all sorts of cool things for um, for running, debugging, creating unit tests. And uh, the metadata perspective allows you a, a look into a whole bunch of um, 
reusable metadata objects. In in the case like uh, the um, uh, the pipeline run configurations, okay, I want to run something locally, or I want to run it on Dataflow, for example. Uh, what is my project ID? I don't want to have to type that all in all the time. Uh, I know what the settings are that I want to do. I want to use a small instance because I'm a cheap uh, person that doesn't want to spend a lot of money. And uh, so if I have something like this, uh, which is a unit test, I can run it locally. And then say, okay, my unit test uh, is, is working. Uh, I'm running locally by uh, setting data from a data set. And this data set is pretty much just a couple of hundred of records that are stored locally. And I can use the file explorer to actually see uh, what that is, the customer's input here, which is this file. And so, so I can just use that to, to test locally. And essentially, I am expecting seven rows as output, just, just the people from California. And if I don't get these seven rows as, as, as output, then the golden uh, data doesn't match and I'm getting narrower. And that's as simple as, as you can make that. And once you have that up and running, I could say, well, uh, now I'm gonna run it maybe against a, a, a direct runner or a Spark uh, runner. And so that is like a uh, direct beam direct runner is a, an in-memory local engine. And I can set, well, my input is uh, not the data set, but an input file locally. And then you can run that one. That just takes a few seconds. And then when you uh, gained enough uh, confidence that all that is, is working correctly, um, then you can say, well, now maybe I can run it uh, on Dataflow where it costs actual money, right? Um, it doesn't really cost me any money. I, I still have like a budget from uh, from the Beam Summit from a few years ago that I haven't. Uh, so so then the, so then you can run it and uh, it starts up uh, a new uh, process on. Um, um, on on Google Cloud uh, platform on the Dataflow engine, and after a few seconds, it it starts to allocate uh, processes, and you can see basically the same uh, things happening. The same happens for Spark or Flink. You can just uh, uh, configure the server for that, and where is it running? Uh, fire it off against the master. It does a, a Spark submit or a Flink run. Uh, so uh, yeah, so this is pretty much the uh, uh, the metadata, the file explorer, and uh, the file explorer can also be used to uh, if you have a if if this is a Git project, you can basically do uh, push pull commits revert uh, against that, and we also have search capabilities so that if you do something like uh, I don't know, uh, data flow, oh, so that's the location, the whole project, data flow. You say, okay, I have the run configuration or something like host name. Uh, I have a host name called Mercury somewhere. Uh, it's in this configuration file and then you can just open that and say, okay, here's my, uh, my host name. So this is for this local configuration file. So that's the that's the cool cool stuff that you can do with that, and uh, so yeah. So this this uh, this will fail by the way because I had to use this one. Uh, in any case, so that gives you kind of like an overview of um, of what goes on in in the Hop ecosystem. Uh, you can build uh, pretty cool uh, things with that. And if you download uh, Hop, you will uh, you will get um, the works with that, right? Um, so the documentation of Hop. I don't know why that is so small. Um, there's a there's a nice getting started um, a page that uh, 
walks you through the concepts. In general, it's just quite easy to, to get started. Um, let's go back to my presentation. Because I see I'm all, already 20 minutes in. Um, so how can you incubator? How was that? Well, you know, <laughs> we're still ongoing. Um, so Apache is a community building organization and the, uh, the saying goes, great communities deliver great software and that is something that we've seen. And so we were asked during incubation to grow the community and release Apache software the Apache way um, with all the uh, T's crossed and the, 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 the I's dotted, right? And um, so it started with a, with a proposal that we did. So um, it took us about half a year to figure out exactly what we wanted to do, uh, what the project name was, the goals, the collaborators who wanted to join in, you know, uh, what, what, what software did we include, what, what do you want to start with? And so, uh, yeah, we got a lot of help from the folks in the uh, ESF and other Apache projects. I remember talking to the Apache Beam uh, folks in Berlin. That was uh, back when we still could do like a real life events. Talking to Matthias Bartels and other people, really helpful to to get an idea of, of what uh, the ASF was and, and what the, that uh, you know incubation and doing a project project entailed. Uh, champion mentors, uh, uh, Julian, Francois, the others, very useful. Uh, Julian did a nice presentation on all the things that we should do and, and set our expectations right on. Uh, don't rush these things. Just take your time, right? And that's just what we're doing. And uh, so uh, I think that one of the advices that, that I took to heart was look at the future, forget about the past, wherever you you start from, it's, it's important to know where you want to go to. And, uh, so the, this, this has been a year ago that we first, <laughs> that we started the incubator uh, project. And uh, so we have many legal hurdles, uh, copyright headers, uh, not just for Java code. Uh, so one of the things that we needed to do was uh, include copyright headers in the integration test. So we, we have integration tests for a lot of transforms, right? And so, so these are basically XML documents. Um, so we can, we can take a look at one of these. And so they all include like a license header. And so, um, that led to us having to generate this header uh, from inside the project, from inside uh, the XML serialization environment, which is the GUI. And so if you take a look at this environment, uh, we, we created a, an environment variable called hop license header file, which basically inserts this header uh, whenever we change the samples or the integration test. So that that is not an issue, right? Um, but that is causing an issue on um, on GCP, right? So I said it would fail, and the reason is, you know, I can I can show this to you is, yeah, it's it's the wrong environment. I'm I'm using the wrong environment. It's uh, it's not finding the file, the the header file, right? And I want this to fail because I don't want to. Um, forget about checking in. So I have another example, GCP, which has a different config file, which doesn't set this variable. And so I can do easily switch between these environments. And this also means that I can easily switch between uh, configuring against a local database, against a remote database, against a cloud environment, or a Docker setup that I'm trying. So that, this makes it very easy to switch between the environments while keeping the metadata and the project exactly the same. So now I can run this again against data flow and it will succeed because, you know, it's, it's the right environment. Uh, so, so those kinds of um, uh, hurdles led to 
Uh, great solutions, I guess, right? We, we now include the copyright header everywhere. And you could say it's a gnarly requirement, but it's it's one that we uh, that we a hurdle that we took and and yeah it's, it's it worked out fine. Um, existing codes, uh, you know, if you're refactoring over a million lines of code, we did find a lot of GPL LGPL code violations that were piled up in in 20 years. And we often had to rewrite code from scratch, throw it out, just, yeah. Removing code of unclear origin. Um, yeah, it's it's unbelievable what kind of uh, things um, that uh, an older code base attracts, right? So a lot, you know, was just moved out and, and removed. And so we came up with a, a uh, code acceptance path through an external repository. Uh, I think it's github.com project hop, project dash hop, which has external plugins which either violate the Apache licenses or where we don't have clear um, permission to include the code, maybe because the person moved off to other pastures. Uh, or maybe because, uh, yeah, the email with permission wasn't clear enough or whatever. For whatever reason, we, we just decided to move it out because it's a very, we have a very a pluggable modular uh, setup. So the way that our plugins work is simply, you know, there's a plugins folder here. And um, so everything from uh, data types to the various actions transform uh, technology. So if, if you don't need Azure code, you just remove the folder or Cassandra just drop the folder. Um, if you don't need any of the uh, Beam stuff, you just remove the Beam folder and there you go. Uh, that's as simple as it, as it gets, right? Uh, adding is the same thing, right? So adding uh, our plugins works the same way. Um, so listing licenses in the in the client binary download. Obviously, if you have that much technology that you're integrating, uh, every piece of that technology comes with a different license. It might be MIT, might be whatever, right? Uh, Eclipse license. A lot of licenses are compatible with the Apache. Uh, a public license, so but we still need to list them in the client binary download. So that got automated now, and um, and then obviously the license, the notice, disclaimer, readme, uh, getting that right was all, um, let's say, not painful, but a lot of work. <laughs> and then uh, the technical hurdles were impressive. Um, Twenty years. Uh, Removing of Caraf, Apache Caraf, really nice, but uh, quite heavy and slow and was slowing the, the project down. We moved to Jandex and so the mantra now is everything as a plugin, API cleanup, GUI rewrite, scaling, dark mode. Uh, was a lot of work. Uh, single sourcing the code base with Apache uh, Hop Web. So you can run this in, in the browser. So that's the exact same code base. And um, yeah, Jenkins, those were all uh, pretty, um, uh, pretty very positive results on the, in the you know, in general. Uh, squeaky clean code base now, nice API. Uh, we can sleep easy thanks to the integration tests. Um, I think as everybody knows what to do and what not to do, um, and uh, even the development builds are always fairly stable. Uh, growing community as well internally in the project, we have uh, more and more communication on the chat servers and the Jira cases, and uh, really a useful discussions in depth around the, the stuff that matters, right? And uh, externally, we see more plugins uh, show up like. Uh, Last week, the GIS plug plugins, the geospatial plugins from Atoll. Uh, messages, tweets uh, on all sides. Um, and then, um, you know, we saw the appearance of uh, the first user groups. 
the user group in Japan. Uh, I'll share the slide deck in some way. But you can find these on hubapache.community events links. And uh, you can join these uh, groups if you like. Um, of, of note, we organize ourselves uh, every couple of weeks. We've, uh, we've delayed the last ones after the summer period. Uh, but in a few weeks, we'll start again with the Hot Hop Hangouts, where we do uh, regular online hangouts. And we get up to uh, 60, 70 people on those. And we alternate technical and business content. So, uh, you know, we do business use cases or, um, you know, or, or technical deep dives into uh, uh, Beam or, or other technologies. Very useful to, to ask your questions on, on those hot, hot, hot hangouts. And uh, I also wanted to highlight that, you know, integration tools like uh, Hop integrate software, right? So we integrate with a large number of APIs and we uh, specifically towards other <laughs> Apache projects, nearly all commons libraries are being used. Um, maybe a few obscure ones that we don't use, but yeah, all of them. Uh, for, for things like Lang, uh, we use uh, version two and three. <laughs> And, um, you know, we integrate a lot of established projects, Avra, Batik, Beam, Cassandra, you know, all of, you know, all the popular ones pretty much. And, uh, and, and we certainly want to work with other incubating projects like Doris and others. We, we, uh, we try to reach out when we think it's useful. Um, but if you are an incubating project, we, you think that you can, uh, there's a, there's a, makes sense to integrate with us yeah just just let us know there's plenty of room for for everybody uh two things that i want to specifically highlight to apache projects apache beam it's, it's fairly uh, critical to us to move that project to move that integration forward so uh, specifically for beam we uh, we did the basics now in 1.0 uh, with the popular um, uh, YOs that we support, like uh, BigQuery and, and stuff like that. Uh, obviously, we want to uh, increase uh, GUI support for more and more YOs. Uh, maybe Snowflake YO or others that are, might be popular. The The way that we do that is that we look at the Jira cases that come in or the people that are asking for it on the, on the uh, user uh, mailing list or on, on the a Mattermost chat server, and then we know, okay, so what is needed? Usually it's very easy to, to write these uh, wrappers around the existing um, uh, Beam wires because, yeah, the, the hard part is done by Beam. <laughs> we just need to provide a little thin, veneer, a thin bit of veneer, uh, a little bit of dog and pony show, and then, yeah, that is, that is done. Um, uh, so Apache Hub also relies very heavily on Apache VFS. Uh, VFS is used throughout the uh, uh, the toolset. So that means that if I do something like I don't know uh, Google Storage Apache Hub, um, I get like uh, a view of uh, the output I was just uh, so here here is all my testing <laughs> data right and I can just uh, open a file and I can see the output and so this is not just a gimmick you can even do projects uh, folders in uh, on Google storage or on Azure or on s3 whatever you want and this makes it easier to store that project metadata, the, the, the test cases, the data, everything can be uh, stored anywhere that VFS allows. Um, it could be a zip file, it could be an FTP server, you know, whatever, right? whatever that's supported. And um, so this makes it very easy to just not use Git as 
uh, version control, but also say, okay, I'll, I'm copying everything into Google Storage because that makes it easier for me to just uh, fire up a Docker container on Kubernetes and point to that project over there in the cloud, right? And so, uh, so it's been quite uh, fun to write these drivers. The latest edition was uh, somebody wrote the Dropbox one, uh, but this is Azure um, Blob Storage, uh, Google Storage S3, Amazon S3 support. I see that I have five minutes left. <laughs> Uh, the roadmap, so release 1.0, I hope that the voting uh, goes right. I think we have four votes, a few more, and we're done. And then we'll have release 1.0, which means that in the meantime, we open to 1.1.0 snapshots uh, branches for those that want to uh, help out. We're, we will continue to innovate, continue to, to, to develop. Uh, the main concern for... Uh, the release numbering is compatibility, right? Compatibility is spe specifically with the metadata that we have. And uh, the next uh, thing that our mentors are asking, they say, they're saying we're ready to become a top level project. So we need to do the paperwork there and I guess ask for a vote. That's quite exciting. And then the next things on the innovation list are uh, creating an open marketplace which is a gnarly problem because we don't really have a great place in the Apache organization to run the marketplace server. So we need to create an, an open uh, specification there for the marketplace so that we can um, allow um, links to other marketplaces uh, or internal marketplaces at organizations that have their own uh, plugins, you know, allow those possibilities. Uh, pluggable field expressions, that's one thing that uh, I'm passionate about and a few others. Uh, tighter Air Apache Airflow integration is on the list. Some work has been done there so that we'll generate um, um, Airflow uh, operators and uh, code basically from uh, the execution of a workflow while still maintaining the uh, the lineage and the, and the view in the airflow. That's going to be fun. Uh, more Beam plugins. Google, Google improvements include things like Dockable uh, uh, dialogues so that you don't have dialogues popping up but are docked to the right or the left. Uh, so, yeah, so that's what's on the agenda. And I'm afraid my 40 minutes are already up. So let me just leave this on the screen and thank you for your, your attention and for your, uh, uh, for your support. Please join the Hub community if you find any of this interesting and uh, hop on board. Let's see, uh, see if there are any questions. Um, yes, there were two questions. 20 minutes ago, but I don't know if you already answered them. What are the main differences between Apache Nifi and Apache Hop? Because we had the Nifi mm -hmm. talk right before this one. Well, um, what we uh, wanted to do was create a platform that is not tied to any existing server or services or even uh, even our own uh, execution engine, right? Uh, so Apache Hop uh, really wants to be wants to be a metadata driven, really lightweight uh, platform. You don't need to install a server or anything. You can even run Apache Hop uh, pipelines and workflows from within your own code, integrated. So I guess that's where the differences are uh, mainly. Yeah. Um, and the other question was, when should I consider to take Apache Hop rather than Apache Nifi? Well, <laughs> uh, for other, um, but, uh, oh, I don't know. <laughs> I guess it depends on how I, you feel comfortable. I, I uh, usually don't say anything negative about other Apache projects. <laughs> <laughs> 
I don't feel really qualified to answer that. Um, I think the, the the main thing is that, uh, yeah, just look at the requirements that you have. And if Apache Hop uh, serves those requirements, all the better, right? <laughs> <laughs> And if NiFi, if NiFi does that, then, then that's fine as well. That is great. <laughs> or just try both uh, projects yeah, yeah. and see for yeah, yourself. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. they're free to test. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but I think, yeah, obviously, so uh, the, the, um, the execution engines like Spark, Knife, uh, Spark uh, Flink, and Dataflow are quite popular. And I guess, uh, especially data flow is something that, uh, so I work for Neo4j, Graph Database. We run more and more uh, of our databases in the cloud. Um, so yeah, so the ability to, to run on data flow or in cloud uh, platforms without any extra installation. So that's what we're moving towards very lightweight uh, orchestration of, of these uh, workloads. So yeah, I don't know how NiFi does that, but last time I looked at it, it was different different architecture, more based on, I guess, uh, their sponsors, uh, Cladera, um, Hadoop, right? Which is totally fine. It's just a different architecture. We need different evolutions and different yeah, ways yeah, of approaching absolutely. the same things. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, my time is up. Thank, thank you, you very Matt. much for the opportunity. And thank you, Maria. It was a great talk. All See right. you on the next session. The right. uh, process batch trans transaction using Azure Blob integration with Apache Camel. Apache Camel, oh. another project we want to integrate with. <laughs> Cheers. Yes. <laughs> Bye. Bye.